Back at the beginning of 2020, one of the biggest things people were talking about in the anime world was that Crunchyroll and Webtoons were teaming up to bring us adaptations of several of the biggest manhwa around. For those of you who don't know, manhwa are Korean comics. And in a world where intellectual property is anything, being able to get in on a potentially new big thing is freaking huge. But if you were around to see these shows, and if you've just been watching a lot of anime retrospectives like I have lately, you've probably noticed that this experiment didn't go over well for everybody. Um, and I can understand that. Having said that, though, I really liked uh, Tower of God, and I loved God of High School, and would love to give them their own videos, which, you know, might do that next, because, you know, we're already talking about one of them, might as well do the other two. Uh, but... There is one that there is no defending. There is one that is genuinely one of the most incompetent, idiotic, poorly made anime I think I've ever seen. And no one cared or covered it because they were probably just tired of the whole manhwa thing by the time it came out. But that's why I'm here. I am here to let you know about Noblesse, a show that is so bad and so boring and so dumb that I'm fucking in love with it. I have not stopped thinking about this show since it ended back around the holidays. I genuinely think about this show at least once every couple of days, just dumbfounded by what the fuck happened here. I am in love with this show in a way that I don't know if I've ever been in love with an anime before. And that is why we have to talk about this today for my own sanity. <laughs> So let us begin with where Noblesse chooses to begin. Now, normally, when I review an anime, I start off with talking about the premise. I obviously want to give y'all a brief introduction into what the show is, as the show would in, say, its first episode. Because we're talking about Noblesse, we can't do that. Why? Because the first episode of Noblesse does nothing a pilot needs to do. Pilots and first episodes need to give you an idea what the world is like, who the characters are, and what is going on. None of these things are accomplished even remotely. <laughs> the way this show opens is so mind-bogglingly insane, I thought I was going to lose it. This show begins with showing a security guard in front of a high school and two characters greeting him and all these girls fondling over him and then it just cuts to two dudes talking about memories being overwritten. That is the introduction! And like, there's nothing sinister being presented here or anything that would make you think this is for intrigue. This is a straightforward, normal conversation. You are just supposed to assume that you know what's going on and that it all makes sense, and it doesn't. And the reason for that is because the pilot for this show was made like two years ago and was not aired in, uh, in lead up to the broadcast of the actual season. That's insanity! Pilots are often made a couple of years in advance. That's very common. But no! Like, usually you re-air them around the same time so people know what's going on! They don't do that! And I know that the, the pilot OVA is currently on Crunchyroll. I don't know if it wasn't at the time and if there was some, like, extenuating circumstance, but I refuse to watch it. They presented the show to us like this. This was what they thought the most logical thing to do was. And you know what? If that's what you want, fine. Where does the show go from here? Nowhere! The, the, the entire first episode is just based around showing this security guard dude and he's got like weird magic powers or something and it makes zero sense and the show just goes along with it. What's the other big thing in this first episode? Well, obviously we got to spend time with the protagonist, this cool looking vampire dude. And I will say this, he looks neat, I guess. He's very obviously a vampire. <laughs> Now, look at him. This is clearly a grown man. This looks like a 30-year-old man. So you assume that since the show is set at a school, okay, maybe he's like a teacher. If you saw or read the premise, you know that it's about this vampire dude who wakes up in the modern day and wants to kind of like 
uh, uh, get used to normal society. Okay, that's that's a neat idea. That could be fun. Uh, so what's he going to do? Okay, he's going to become a teacher so he can learn from the students and try and understand the modern world, right? Wrong! This 30-year-old man is a student! Like, everyone just talks to him like he's a normal teenager! What?! <laughs> Now, many of you will say, well, in anime, characters never look the right age. This is a 10-year-old, according to anime. Here's the thing. <laughs> Normally, in anime, uh, we kind of try to establish a baseline of what people are supposed to look like. Ash Ketchum is a 10-year-old. So is Misty and May and all these other characters he travels along with. And that's the idea of the universe. Same with giving characters in anime blue hair or giant eyes or huge boobs. All of these things are presented to you in a way that is, these are just the way this universe works. These are the quirks around it. He looks 30! This is a grown man. Whenever he's around the actual high schoolers who, make no mistake, are drawn to look fairly older than what a normal 16, 17 year old looked like, he still looks older than them. He looks like their, their father. This is insanity. And then it just gets crazier because then we get these two other vampires who show up to hunt the main one or something. And like, they don't do anything. They trick the manservant sexy dude into letting them stay at his house and go to the school and they don't realize their hypnotism doesn't work on him and he just goes along with it. Okay, that's kind of a funny little idea. And like, they don't do anything. They just bond with the, the main vampire guy's two human friends for several episodes and then the security guard dude gets kidnapped and they don't go looking for him. They don't do anything, but it's fine because the security guard guy isn't in danger. He's just like being tied to a chair and they bring him food and they're helping him out with something. <laughs> These bad guys are terrible bad guys. And so then, like, naturally, what you expect happens. The two high schoolers get caught in the middle, and the main vampire guy, Rai, I think his name is, is going to go save them. So, okay, it's time for some fucking fights. Because this is production IG. They got money. They got the animators. Hell, they had a great anime airing alongside it that had great Sakuga. So surely the fights in this are going to be awesome, right? Wrong! Every fight in this is the same fight! Because the main character is so insanely overpowered, there is nothing to get invested in. He literally just looks at people, and they lose the fight. He has his main power, which I like to call generic red CGI uh, uh, effect, which just, like, beats villains instantly. <laughs> and that's it. And that's it. The villains are just beaten. They've got all this mumbo jumbo about conspiracy organizations and weird magic powers and enhanced chemicals. It doesn't mean jack shit. It, it just ends. It stops. And so they do like one episode that is just the high school friends and all the magic people goofing around. And I actually kind of like that. I was kind of willing to give this show a break. But no. No. What does it then do? It does my least favorite thing in all of fiction. It just has the two conveniently lose their memories. Okay, it's worked into the plot, but it's dumb. For those of you who don't know, because you're new around here, uh, memory erasing is my least favorite thing in all of fiction because essentially everything we just went through with the characters is rendered meaningless. It's never really done for a good reason. It's just to either write characters out or retain the status quo. This is both because these two are not in the next arc. So the next arc is about the vampires. You learn more about where the vampires come from and what do they do? Except you fucking don't. So the vampires have, like, their own country. What do they do with that country? I don't know. They never tell you. They never say what the vampires are doing or what the main character did with the vampires, like, 3,000 years ago, whatever the fuck is happening. You don't even know it's the present for most of it. They never do anything to integrate the vampires into the rest of the plot. I assumed it would turn out the vampires were leading the, like, conspiracy organization from the first arc. No! They have nothing to do with anything. They just exist. They're just there, and you don't see how they interact with the 21st century, so there's just nothing to them or any purpose to them. And so then it's like, uh, you got the villain vampire lady who's mad at main vampire guy for getting a promotion or 
some shit and she held on to this for 3,000 years, even though she's queen of the vampires, so it clearly all worked out for her. But she's still like, no, he will suffer for what he did to me. I don't remember what she did to her. gets resolved the whole second arc is resolved by like a phone message that's it it's literally resolved by the main character just like showing a message from the girl's dad or something and it's just like hey uh it's it's fine everything's fine be happy be friends sing kumbaya and it ends <laughs> that's how it ends I expected, like, a big, goofy cliffhanger to get you to watch a season two. That's what these shows always do, right? They gotta give you that hook to keep watching so they can make more episodes. No! This is the one time one of these dumb anime has, like, a legit conclusion. Like, obviously, there's plot threads that could be explored later and are probably explored much better in the manhwa. Uh, but... Not here! <laughs> no! Like, it's not going to get another season. And the show just kind of ends on this note of just like, hey, all's well that ends well. And while I kind of respect a quaint, simple ending like that, this was not earned at all. It tries to end on a power of friendship ending, but no one has chemistry. Which sucks, because like, whenever there is just these fun, casual, goofy moments, I could see how it could work. I could see how just like the chill vibe this show has in several of its episodes could be fun. And like, probably is a fun read, but there's no effort put into it. There's nothing inspiring or creative about it, especially when this is a studio who can do creative and fun aspiring work. It's just bad. This doesn't even work as like a cool guy pretty boy show, which it's also trying to be. Because like the animation is so bad and the character designs are very like early 2000s boy band. So there's just nothing that anyone or anything in this show but it fascinated me there's no attempt at all to update anything or get you interested or invested at all it just presents everything to you and just expects you to go along with it everyone who worked on the show seems to seem to genuinely just think it was all gonna work out and so they seemed passionate about nothing but everything at the same time <laughs> and it's fascinating Oh, God. Do I think you should watch this as a so bad it's good show? Honestly, not really. Part of what gets me through the show is I do genuinely enjoy chill vibe weird people just being chill weird people. And I think when the show was attempting to do that, it made it a little more tolerable. But most people who did give this show a try mostly found it boring. And I think that is really where it lies. I just wanted to put this out there and put some other thoughts out. Because I do want to talk about the other manhwa adaptations. And I do want to start off with the worst one so we can end on the best one. So yeah, that was no bless. It's terrible, it's stupid. <laughs> but if you have a morbid curiosity and just find genuinely bad anime fascinating... I recommend this, weirdly enough. But tell me what you thought about No Bless. Did you actually like it? Uh, please explain. I must know this. Uh, and tell me that below. And as always, click the like, click subscribe, and join me for uh, checking out the other Mon ones.